everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Sophia Parola with Garden State Film Festival, and we are talking about the feature film Stag. Here to talk to us, here to talk to us is the writer, director, and executive producer of the film, Alexandra Spieth. Alexandra, yeah. thanks so much for taking time out to talk to us today. Congratulations. Oh my God, of course. No, thank you so much for having me. Uh, the Stag team and I are all so excited to be at the festival and we're just super stoked. So thank you. Oh, me too. I'm so excited for the audiences at Garden State Film Festival to watch this film. I watched it. I loved it. I was on the edge of my seat waiting for what was going to happen. So I'm really honored to talk to you today about it. Thank Let's you. get started by you introducing yourself and telling us a little bit about Stag. Absolutely. So I'm Alexander Spieth. I am a writer, director, actor, and I wrote and directed and executive produced Stag, which is a movie which is all about like essentially what I consider toxic femininity. It's all sort of about like a group of women and um, at a bachelorette party and the sort of like horrifying fallout of what could happen in those situations. Because I don't know, for me, I went on a, a couple bachelorettes and I was just like, man, this is so wild that it's this kind of, you know, experience where you usually are gathered with people who you think are sort of like your best friends, but because it's such a high stakes event, it feels like there's some some like blood in the water sometimes. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. And I love that toxic femininity because we hear about toxic masculinity all the time. We all know that way too, way too much. So <laughs> this was awesome yeah. that you're presenting us with some toxic femininity. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm currently, I'm currently working on another feature, which is definitely tackling more of like toxic masculinity. So I totally like, mm -hmm. you know, I dig both sides, but it's oh, been absolutely. amazing to have kind of done one and get the chance to like look at the other i mean obviously there are multiple sides of everything right. kind of like just look specifically at those two spheres oh and i love that you're like making it equal I love yeah that. exactly yeah yeah, oh my gosh. Like, yeah you touched going. a little on your inspiration that you've been to so many bachelorettes and you just were like wow and it's funny because i'm actually going on one in a few months my first mm -hmm. bachelorette Party. Congrats, Mazel. And it is crazy. The stuff that goes into like, uh, yeah, but we won't talk about that. Let's talk about you and your inspiration for writing Stag. Yeah, so I um, honestly, it came from two places. As I mentioned, right, like at a certain point in my life, like it was around that time where a lot of my friends are getting engaged and sort of like, and you know, I was, I was at the time sort of a single person. So it sort of is like you're in these spaces where you have a lot of pressure and you feel some sort of like matrimonial desires or whatever, but you're also the person who's alone. So like that was one part of it. And then also previous to making Stag, I was working as an actor and I toured a one woman show, which was based on the Steubenville rape case to college and universities across America. And like I was, and part of the one woman show required um, interviews with audience members who were like college students. And it was so wild to hear about how sort of in so many different colleges across the world, and it, you know, I didn't even go to that many, right? So it must be rampant. But there are all these stories of like assault, gaslighting, things which are never, ever resolved. And these people are so young. And so it was sort of like this idea of like, hey, I want to talk about what happens when two friends who have had like a really bad situation in the past do get to meet up. And for me, this is a story about retribution. It's a story about, as I've mentioned, like assault. It's about gaslighting. But it's also like fun and girly, you know, yeah. the way the bachelorette parties can be. And I just was like, hey, for me, like, you know, I wanted to create, like, I mean, I always want to do things that are like funny kind of, because I'm just like, what's the point? If you're just like, what, well, you know, this is so right. serious. Um, but, and for me, I think humor is really subversive. So I thought it was a really cool way to get to be like, hey, I'm able to talk about these tropes, these ideas. There's a little bit of camp involved, but I'm also like, hey, for me, like, you know, I do think this work is sacred. And I do think that having done like the show about the Steubenville rape case, like changed my life and made wow. me think about all these different experiences and all these like broken threads that are just sort of like throughout must be rampant across america and every other place in the world so yeah and yeah those were sort of how the two collided oh amazing thank you so much for sharing that is that's so cool how you came up with this and how long did it take to write when did it first come together um so i i will say like the real meat of writing came in covid like i would say that i started 
really digging into this script about like May 2020 and we were filming by May 2021. So I did like, you know, five drafts pretty quickly. But that being said, this idea of a loner who goes to a bachelorette party and sort of like encounters, uh, you know, trouble has been something that's been on my mind for a long time. Like, you know, I like, honestly, I used to write on cell text. Now I use final draft and I like looked back at my cell text for some reason. I was like, oh my God, I tried to write this movie. Wow. Like the characters. It was a story were, brewing in you. You had yeah, to. Yeah, to yeah, totally. So it's, and like that, and the version I looked at at cell text was like, I mean, I was like, oh God, thank God. I didn't do this <laughs> one. But you know, it's the, it was the same idea. It was just like a lot of yeah. the characters were different. There were like men in the film. I mean, there is, a, there were a couple men in the film yeah. but it was more like equitable in terms of like gender parity. And in this one, it's pretty much like, I mean, it's mostly girls. <laughs> like yeah. Top to bottom, it's mostly girls. So yeah. And also I just like, I, I honed in on what I wanted to look at, which was sort of these spheres of uh, women gaslighting each other. Mm. I'm glad you mentioned the characters too, because I want to talk about your cast. They're all so talented and all the mm -hmm. characters are so different. It seems so fun to play. Um, so I'd love to hear how you found these wonderful actors and um, what was the hardest character to cast? What was the easiest character to cast? Oh my God, that's a really good question. Um, okay, every single one of these, like I, I did audition most of the cast but I knew all of these women from different spheres of my life. The lead who plays Jenny, I'd done an off-Broadway play with her. The woman who plays Mandy, we used to work at the same restaurant, Westville. What? what? Um, <laughs> I, uh, the woman who plays Leslie was a graduate from Carnegie Mellon, which is where I went, but she was like a, numerous years younger than me. Um, the woman who plays Willa was my best friend's friend from Wicked. And Katie Wheland wow. and Stephanie Hogan, who play um, Casey and Constance, are like two of my best friends. And we went to school together. So, yeah, I mean, in a way, in a way, it felt very natural, right? Like, I didn't go through, like, actors access or backstage or any of that. These were just people who I knew could kind of do the roles. But I will say, for me, the hardest person to cast was Mandy, who is played by Elizabeth Ramos. Um just because that was the character who I had the most people audition for Mandy. Like I was kind of, and, and there were a lot of incredible actresses who came in, but the thing that was like a real struggle was finding somebody who felt viable as someone who would be friends with sort of this like, you know, loner, this like sort of neurotic loner and someone who could also be friends with this sort of real estate agent, like girl gang, yeah. who kind of like live in a far more like in the movie, like a far more superficial world, a world that's far more about like the desire to be, to be wed before a certain age. And it was just really hard to find mm -hmm. someone who like, okay, I really do buy that they could be over there with Jenny. And they also could be over there with Willa and Casey kind of. Oh. And honestly, like, I mean, I asked Elizabeth to audition, like, probably like a day before we were doing, you know, Zoom auditions, obviously, because it was COVID. And I was kind of like, oh, you know, like, we worked at a restaurant together. Let's see. And I was just like, oh, man, like, she's the person who really does connect the dots, where I really do buy her with both parties. And I do understand how, you know, how that happened where if you went through something really traumatic with a best friend, you would potentially look for something that may be seemingly safer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was for me the hardest cast because everyone else, honestly, everyone else, like it was just like once I saw the audition and they were tapes, like this, it wasn't like most of them, the others had submitted tapes. Mm -hmm. And when I saw the tape, I was like, oh yeah, that's it. Like oh, that's wow. it that's Jenny, that's Leslie. Um, I knew the women who were playing Casey and Constance, my two best friends, like absolutely were going to, you know, do the work. So I, yes. I, like, I didn't, you know, I wasn't worried about them. And like, I didn't, I didn't uh, audition either of the two of them for their roles, but yeah, it was Mandy. Mandy wow. was the hardest one. Definitely. Wow, awesome. And I want to talk about the location that you filmed in. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous, breathtaking, yeah. Those opening shots. Oh my gosh. And 
what was it like filming on location? How long did it take to film? What was that process like? Oh my God, it was 17 days. Um, wow. It was, I mean, it was just like, it was amazing. Like, honestly, because initially the conceit had been a lot more like, we're in a house, right? We're in a house in the mountains. Um, it was a lot more like get out where I was hoping like, oh, maybe we can get like a huge manor house for like really, really cheap. And they'll just let us like live and film there. And then I was like, wait, hold on. Like, that's like not actually like a really achievable goal. So my producer, Natasha Soto Albors, who is incredible, um, and I started kind of tag teaming locations. And we were like, okay, what we really need to look at during COVID is pla like places that look cool, but also a place that has kind of just a ton of space. Because mm -hmm. even though we were gonna film in May, 2021, which had been after the vaccine rollout in um, New York, mm -hmm. like, you know, it was just a time where it was like, hey, we can't be asking like, you know, we can't be asking people to share rooms together really, like mm -hmm. in a hotel or something. And we don't have the budget to allow that. So we started just hitting up camps upstate and we're like, hey, you know, who who's around? Who, who might be down to let us do this? And, you know, we emailed a ton of camps, uh, you know, kind of heard nothing, 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 nothing. And then um, Jeff Blank, who owns Forest Lake Camp, got back to us. And he's just like, you know, he's a really, really nice guy. And for him, he was kind of like, hey, you know, this is an opportunity for us, the camp, to like see if we could do a movie set. Because right. they do weddings, obviously, you know, because uh, their high season for children is the summer obviously and you know they'll rent it out to weddings and such but I think he just like you know he was just somebody who was like a deus ex machina for us where he was just mm -hmm. like hey you know I'm kind of willing to do this he cut us like an amazing deal his staff provided food they let us wow. essentially have run of this 865 acre camp like we got use of multiple cabins for essentially like a pretty a very very reasonable flat rate and it's just one of those things where I really do feel this way about locations because I've been a micro budget filmmaker for a long time mm -hmm. where it's like, Hey, there is someone who, who thinks this is an opportunity. There right. is someone who's like, Hey, it seems like fairly risk averse, you know, like these people have insurance. It's a like, I mean, it is a horror, but I would say for horrors, it is, fairly tame like mm -hmm. or and kind of like violence wise and like we were a group of um you know there were obviously men on the team but we were a group of really like respectable strong women who like you know who brought a lot to the table and had a lot of credibility mm -hmm. like I've made like you know 30 shorts and oh my god two feature length projects Natasha's done so much stuff and I think just like we all kind of really got along yeah. but he really saved our lives and you know, I just really can't, like, I cannot thank Jeff enough. Dang. He, Shout out to you, Jeff. Yeah. That, that location. Oh, my God. I hope you're yeah. making more films. I mean, selfishly, it's like, I kind of hope they don't because your film is, is the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But totally. it's a wonderful location. What a yeah, great place. Yeah, it's incredible. Oh, my gosh. And I want to, you mentioned the crew, and I saw, like, your DP is a woman. And mm -hmm. and I love that you guys were yeah. a really strong female-led led crew. Absolutely. We were an all-female camera team. Um, wow. We are a 75% female producer team. There was one male producer. Um, obviously, I'm a woman. I'm the writer director. It's like, I mean, it's like, it's got to be like a 70% 70, 70 female cast, you know, because it's yeah. like, I think there are only like three a or couple yeah. in it, and they're not very big parts. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, that was part of the, like, and it's like, I mean, I love doing that set. Like, it was literally incredible to work with all of those women. And I, like, you know, for this particular project, I was like, this is really important to me, right? Because mm -hmm. it's such a movie that is about the female gaze. Whereas, like, so I was like, you know, for me, this has to be a female DP. Mm -hmm. Like, it has to be someone who, honestly, who just, like, the cast on some instinctual level feels, like, comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Because, like, you know, just because it was a movie that was sort of hyper girly for, for me, mm -hmm. at least I was like, hey, you know, I feel like this is something that's really, really important and something that even though it's a little bit subconscious will allow these people to kind of like reveal themselves in a different way than if like, because the camera is the eye of the yeah. film, even though I'm directing the eye, like it is the thing that sees everyone. The camera is scary. And like, I don't know, I, I mean, honestly, it feels to me like kind of like when you walk into a mammogram and there's a female there, you know, even though it's like a- You're right, absolutely. Like, to have like, you know, and I don't think it's like, I certainly am like men 
can, you know, do that work too, but yeah, there's, there's just some kind of change in energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, for me, that was really, really important for, for, for this, um, mm -hmm. set and such. Um, wow. but yeah, you know, and the, the director of photography, Caroline Mariko Stuckey, she's incredible. Like she, she really, she really like made the movie what it is. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, so proud to know her and have worked with her. Yes. Alexandra, I could talk to you all day. We're yeah. like, we're, we have one minute left and I need to get some advice from you because <laughs> as you said, you've been on many projects. I saw that you starred and wrote an original series, 86. Mm -hmm. Also were in another, wrote another series that went on for four seasons, Blank My Life. Mm -hmm. So I need to talk to you. What are some advice you would give to other directors, to other writers? Like what have you learned in, in your experience filmmaking? Just do it and try to have some fun. Because the truth is like every single project has been the most important thing I've ever worked on in my mind. And the truth is like, it is the work. Like it is the work that like changes your life. It's not about selling it. It's not about, you know, it's, it's it, like, even though those things are obviously things I have aspirations to do and like, you know, I, I you know, I want to get this bread too, but like, it is the, it is a, like, it is the joy of filmmaking. It is the joy of artistry. So just try to, you know, have a little fun, <laughs> you know, have, have a good time kind of. I love it. I love that you, you made a horror and we still had a lot of fun in this horror. So yeah, totally. I love it. I loved meeting you and picking your brain just a little bit. I know there's so much more to talk about, but let me tell everyone quickly how they can see Stag and meet Alexandra because she will be at the festival, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. Um, you will be seeing Stag Saturday, March 25th at the Berkeley Hotel in the Kingsley Ballroom in the film block 8.30 to 10.30 p.m. I couldn't think of a better feature film to watch Saturday night. So definitely come out, check out Stag, meet Alexandra, and maybe the rest of the cast and crew if, if they're making it. Yeah, definitely. Like I'm sure some of us will be there for sure. Awesome. I'll Everybody come out. Yeah. Thank you so much again. Congratulations to you and the crew and the cast. You made a great film. I can't wait to bring it to Garza Film Festival. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. And thank you for your time. See you thank soon. Thank you. I'll see you at the festival. Bye. Bye.